Create dozens of tiny little hair strands with a few clicks of your mouse with these three custom made hairbrushes. I'm Abby Esparza with Envato Touch Plus and I've been creating photo composites with intense backlit hair for almost 10 years now. And these are my absolute favorite brushes for doing just that. However, they aren't just for painting hair, they're also great with masking and lighting hair. All resources featured here today can be found on Envato Elements where you can get unlimited downloads of graphics, photos, and fonts, millions of creative digital assets with simple commercial licensing. Now, let's make some brushes. Let's start by creating the easiest of the three hair brushes, the straight hair strand brush, though they are all relatively simple. Create a big empty white canvas, the size doesn't matter as we're going to crop it when exporting our brush anyway. And now with a black semi hard round brush, uh, paint six dots somewhat close to each other and in different sizes. Use the left and right bracket keys to adjust the brush's size quickly. It doesn't have to be just like what you see here, in fact you can always make a few different dot patterns, turn them all into brushes and have a variety of hair strand brushes to choose from. Next hold control and click the layer icon of the painted dots to create a selection. Hit the crop tool to instantly crop the canvas to the exact size of the dots. Now let's go to edit, define brush preset. Don't worry about naming your brush just yet. Let's open a new canvas with a subject already extracted and in need of some hair to set up and test our brush on. Go to window, brush settings to open the brush settings panel and for the single straight hair brush, all we need to do is set the spacing to just 1%. Still, make sure and save the new brush's setting by hitting the square icon in the bottom right corner of the brush settings panel, or else you'll have to keep setting that brush to 1% over and over again. Now we can paint in some hair. This brush is best used with a tablet as it relies heavily on both pressure sensitivity and opacity sensitivity, however the upcoming brushes are much more mouse friendly. This brush is my personal favorite go-to when painting in backlit hair and I like to refine the painted hair with a soft round eraser brush. When painting backlit hair, I like to use either white or a pale color that matches the overall lighting of the image. I use layers set to normal, soft light, and overlay as well as screen and lighten sometimes, uh, creating multiple layers both below, above, and clipped into my subject. So next up, a curly hair strand brush. Let's go to our original white canvas to make our new shape. Go ahead and create a new layer and stamp a larger hard round black dot onto the canvas. My brush is set to a size of about 125 pixels. However, you can go much, much larger if you want a higher resolution brush. Now let's select the eraser tool and set it to the same size as the paintbrush, which in my case was 125. Take the eraser brush and align it over the black dot, misaligning it slightly so that there is a sliver left over right on top, and then clicking to erase. Basically, we want to create a 1 to 2 pixel crescent moon shape. The thicker the shape, the thicker the hair strand will appear. So again, feel free to make multiple versions of this brush with varying thickness. Again, let's hold control and click the layer icon of the crescent moon shape to create our selection. Hit the crop tool to crop the canvas to size. And then let's go to edit define brush preset. Let's open up a new PSD of a subject with curly hair to set up and test our brush on. Go to window brush settings and set the brush to the following settings. First a spacing of 73%. Next, in shape dynamics, we have a size jitter of 68%, with a minimum diameter of 30%, an angle jitter of 100%, and a roundness jitter of 50%, with a minimum roundness of 25%. In scattering, we have a scatter of 50% and a count of 10. For dual brush, we're going to find our crescent moon shape brush and select it. Then set mode to linear burn. Setting the size to 128, the spacing to 10%, the scatter to 0%, and keeping the count at just 1. 
Don't forget to save the brush using the bottom right button in the brush settings panel, or else you'll have to reapply all of these settings all over again every time you want to use this brush. But now you can use the brush. Don't be afraid to adjust the size of the brush to be larger as it'll scale up well even if you made it smaller like I did. This brush works great with or without a tablet and is excellent for creating tiny hairs caught in the light and creating a dramatic backlit hair effect for people with tighter curls. For our last brush, we'll be creating a wavy strand brush, perfect for painting stray hairs or smaller hair strands. Let's go back to our blank white canvas and paint in a loose S-like shape, making it longer and less curvy. I set my brush size to 10 pixels at 75% hardness, but again, you can play with the thickness here. Now we can take our hard round eraser brush and start thinning out areas of the S-like shape, similar to what we did with the curly hair strand brush. If you painted the S shape with a mouse and not a tablet, make sure to taper the ends of the shape with the eraser brush. Make some areas very, very thin while others remain thick to give the appearance that the shape is twisting. Once happy, let's hold control and click the layer icon to create a selection. Hit the crop tool to crop the canvas down to size and then go to Edit, Define, Brush, Preset. Let's go back to our curly haired subject to set up and test our brush on. The settings are as follows. A spacing of 200%, a 50% size jitter, a 20% angle jitter, a 100% roundness jitter, and in the dual brush, again, let's find our original shape brush and then set the mode to color burn. The size to 619. And finally, the spacing to 10%. Test the brush out and see how it looks. This brush is ideal to use for flyaway hair strands, small pieces of thread or string, a tiny strands of hair that would be catching the light, or any other instance where a touch of detail might be needed. You may end up wanting to add a bit more spacing or add a small amount of scatter. Uh, this brush is highly customizable to what you are painting or painting on. In fact, it's worth testing out different brush settings and shapes for all of the brushes seen here today, giving you a variety of different hair strand brushes to choose from. And that's about it for today, but if that wasn't enough and you're looking to learn even more, why not check out some of the other excellent videos that Envato Tuts Plus has to offer. If you liked this video and would like to see more, consider giving us a like and even subscribing if you haven't already. And don't forget to click the little bell icon to be notified of all new videos, including tips, tricks, and of course, tutorials. Happy designing, see you next time.